Over the next week, 10 young people are going to become apprentices here at Rees Heath College. They're going to be mentored, challenged and tested on a range of tasks that only really scratch the surface of what it means to become a profitable farmer. One of them, the one that impresses the judges the most, is going to be given a huge boost to their career, 10 grand to make their business idea a business reality. Some of them are farmers' sons and daughters, some have actually never set foot on a farm before, but they do have one thing in common, and that is a passion for a career in agriculture. So enjoy their journey, but be careful because you might want to become a farmer too. This is Farmer's Apprentice. In early 2012, over 600 young people registered for Farmer's Apprentice from every corner of the country. But when it came to the final cut, there was only room for 10 of them at boot camp. Hello, my name is Joshua Metcalf, and I'm a 21-year-old English literature student from New Yorkshire. For me, the competition is so much more valuable than just the £10,000 prize money. Being presented with the opportunity to work alongside like-minded, passionate and talented young farmers, as well as the judges, of course, could prove to be invaluable. If I was to win, of course, I would use the £10,000 to help fund an agricultural course and I would also use it to run a small Hebridean flock as a side project. Hello, my name's Catherine. I'm one of the Farmer's Apprentice finalists. I'm finding myself at a crossroads now and I'm hoping that Farmer's Apprentice will absolutely help me decide what direction to go in. Either I can keep going with the politics and trying to make sure all of the agricultural science gets the attention it deserves, or I can try and actually do it myself, become an agronomist and apply some of the things I've heard about and learn a whole lot more. Hi, my name's Sophie, I'm 20 and I live in Derbyshire with my parents, my two dogs, my chickens and my sheep. I bought my first sheep today and it's the start of my business of breeding rare breed sheep and combining it with a rural tourism business. I want to introduce people to the world of sheep farming. I'm very nervous because I don't know what to expect, but I think I'll come out of it at the end a better person and know a lot more about farming. Hello. Hello. Nice suitcase. Thank you. Hi, I'm Michael Scott. I love a challenge. Um, I come from a really competitive sport family and we'll have a bet against each other on anything, just for pride and for bragging rights. But my little brother actually came to me and he bet me that I couldn't get through the final of this Farmer's Apprentice competition. I managed to prove him wrong on that one, so now he's decided that he's going to bet me again that I can't win this competition, so hopefully I've got a shot at proving him wrong for the second time. Hi, I'm Annabelle Storey, 22 from Allendale, Northumberland. I love the countryside, wildlife and its rural pursuits. I have a love for the outdoors and practical work, but also love going out with friends and having a laugh. I just can't wait to go to boot camp and hopefully learn a lot and improve my practical abilities and it's just going to be a great experience. Hi, I'm James Baker. I'm 19 from a small village in Devon. I hope Farmers Weekly can help me this time because it helped me through my English GCSE exam when I should have been revised and I was reading Farmers Weekly. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Josh. Hi, my name is Jeremy O'Brien. If you're from the city, you kind of think that's the way to go, but you know, I hope from this I can, you know, make that contrast with someone who is from the city going to work on a farm that it's a lot more fun than it, it seems, you know. Hello. 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 Pictures on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Farmer's Apprentice. Um, Mike Matier again. Why am I the Farmer's Apprentice? Why should I go to boot camp and come out on top? I'll tell you why. I have a good understanding of financial and global markets. I have the ability to adapt to new circumstances. That's why I'm here. Right. <laughs> hey, I'm George. I'm 21. And uh, since finishing studying at Cambridge University, I've been working out here in New Zealand on a dairy farm. I suppose I applied for Farmer's Apprentice was actually because maybe I've got a little bit of a chip on my shoulder and uh, I've been told so many times that actually someone like me with no farming background, farming's the wrong career for you. But actually I think if you speak to the right people there are so many opportunities out there. Who would want to work in the city when you can work outdoors like this? How are you doing? How are you? Good, thank you. Yeah, we're really good. Hi, I'm Sam. I hope to gain a very valuable experience. Great networking potential. Put a foot in the door. I learned so much in the first couple of days that my head might just explode.
Half of the room don't have a farming background, so boot camp will really test if they've got what it takes to carve out a career in agriculture, while the rest will have to prove that their farming experience stacks up and they really are among Britain's best. And with them all settled at Reese Heath and getting to know each other, it's time to meet the people they'll have to impress, the judges. Leading the judging team is Christine Taken, ex-director of Cooperative Farms. She's vastly experienced in business and team management. Providing the link between business, farming and education is Matthew Bagley. He's an award-winning stockman and he's also the agriculture programme leader here at Reese Heath College. And coming down from Scotland to complete the judging panel is Charlie Russell, a Farmers Weekly Farmer of the Year and manager of the 12,500 acre Glenapp Estate. The characteristics that we would be looking for in the winning apprentice is, I think, a love of the outdoors. The winning apprentice will have to be somebody who's fairly flamboyant, fairly switched on, somebody who can use their personal skills to forward their business, to forward their own agricultural experience. I think we'll also be looking for very good hands-on practical experience and then finally is the ability to work well in a team and to be able to pull that bit extra out of everybody in the team. everybody welcome to farmers apprentice now you're all looking very tense but firstly I must say to you congratulations you are the final 10 out of 600 people who expressed an interest in coming to the farmers weekly boot camp and you have done absolutely brilliantly getting this far so very many congratulations over this week you're going to do an immense range of tasks some of you might find some of the tasks quite easy. Others of you will be stretched to your limits. But for those of you who are completely new to this industry, don't worry, you've got as much chance of winning as somebody who was born to this, because we're going to measure you on how much you've improved and how much you're able to adapt to the things that we give you to do. So I want to wish you all the very best of luck. Thank you very much. So Sophie, um boot camp, you've met all the contestants, what are you kind of expecting from this week? I'd, I'd like to know but I don't actually, they've not told us anything, um, but I think I, I learned the past, in the past half an hour more than I learned in three weeks at college, this people, what they know and I'm not from a farming background so I don't actually know much. <laughs> what on earth are you expecting from this week, what do you think is going to be thrown at you? I haven't got a clue at all what the what's going to happen. I know there's lots of tasks, but not a clue what they're going to involve. Um, lots of fun and challenges. I have no idea. I wish someone would tell us something. I've bought so many clothes, don't have a clue what we're doing at all. I expect to be very, very, very busy, but I expect to be really rewarded as well. Because like, regardless of the outcome, like whether you win or not, it's still going to be a completely invaluable experience. Because you you're rubbing shoulders with people my age who have got similar ideas. So, very, very excited. A mix of practical tasks. I know there are going to be pigs involved, so I'm looking forward to that. I know nothing about pigs, but my, uh, my best friend Imo bought me a pig necklace for boot camp. Um, <laughs> so good luck, I think sure. it's a good sign. I think it's a good sign. From what I've kind of gathered, there's going to be a bit of business, a bit of kind of getting your hands dirty, so a bit of a mishmash, and I'm um, looking forward to it. I just absorb as much as I can and make the most out of this experience, because I reckon there's going to be a great opportunity to learn stuff. And I feel like I'd be missing out loads if I didn't make the most of it. And, and what about the other contestants? You've met them this first morning. Are they friend or foe to you? Friend. They all seem really nice. Yeah, they all, all seem quite down to earth. It's got to be a balance. There has to be a balance between the two. Um, obviously, I don't know whether there's going to be team challenges or what, so I might have to work with each of them one-on-one -on -one, or I might have to work with them in a group. So th there has to be a friend element. And I, I don't want to fall out with anybody. I just want to be friends with everybody. But in the same respect, they are the competition. What would you not want to be asked to do? Hmm, what would I not want to do? I don't particularly like formal presentations. I'm much happier if I can just be in jeans and muddy work boots. I've not said this so far, but I'm petrified of cows. So I've got to get over that and I'm trying, but if a cow runs at me, I may squeal like a girl. I'm a bit scared of pigs, <laughs> but it'll, it'll be fine. Just got to get on and do it. I've never really worked with sheep or pigs or ducks or 
donkeys if they've got donkeys, I don't know. Because I've got that practical experience, I can kind of turn my hand to just about anything. Are you here to win? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to win, but we'll just see what happens. Yeah, I definitely want to win. Um, I'm here to go all the way. Yes, everyone is, I should hope, but I think in the long run, getting into the, you know, the final ten is the most incredible thing. In a day, it's not about the money. You know, if I wanted, you know, if I was here for the money, I'd been the city of London, earning big bucks. I'm here for the, for the, the networking opportunities for, and just for a, a general great experience. That's why I've come. All right, there's a, I think there's a lot more to this than winning 10 grand. Yeah, I want to try and learn stuff. I want to meet these people, try and get some ideas off them. Only one person can win, but all 10 of us can get a huge amount out of this. You're confident? Quietly. You're not bothered about the rain? Oh, no. I'm a farmer. OK, hello. Here I am. In the diary room, diary shed, sorry. So yes, first impressions of boot camp. I love it, it's so exciting. So the first few hours at, um, at boot camp, met the judges, they all seemed cool, met the other contestants. So far, so good. I met some amazing people. It's been obscure, I've never been able to sit and have a conversation with people that do this, want the same thing as me. It's been a good day. Met the other contestants, they're all very skilled people within their, their industries and their sectors of agriculture. I can't believe I'm at boot camp, it's a bit scary. Boys are very competitive, which is uh, quite funny to watch, but um, yeah, the skills are going to have to step up a bit. Today has been quite good so far, uh, really enjoying meeting everybody, everybody seems really, really nice. Day one, very interesting. Walk around the farm, it's amazing. Really impressed with the farm. The, uh, the parlour is stunning, really good. The level of technology they've got and all the kit they've got around here. Anaerobic digester, like those a lot. The competition is unbelievable, really. Like, it's just quite pleasant to be a part of it. I'm really looking forward to the rest of the week. We've just had our first challenge. It's what we would do if we were Prime Minister for the day. Just found out what task we've got to do. We've got to be Prime Minister for a day. Talk about three minutes. Stand up and make a speech for three minutes. Uh, we've got to do these presentations on what I'd do if I was Prime Minister. And basically, hey, I'm a bit stumped on this one. It's such a broad spectrum that I don't really know what to pick in theory into. But hoping mind mapping will help. I'm struggling with words that begin with I and you'll realise what I mean when I, when I do my presentation later on. Yeah, I'm going to come up with a topic that's, you know, really close to heart, something that I really feel really passionate about. Still trying to work out my ideas, but I'm hoping it'll be, you know, a good delivery. Well, I know it's, it's going to be a good delivery. We've just given them their first task. Loads of questions. We tell them to do a three minute presentation. Their first question is, can it be more than three minutes? Next question, can it be less than three minutes? Can it have props? Can it have this? Can it have that? Which just basically is great. Just means everybody's trying to work out what to do. First rule is always make sure you understand the task. I think we're all going to enjoy this. If I was Prime Minister for the day, firstly I'd talk about the uh, cap reform, mainly the single farm payment. I believe farmers should be striving not, not not to rely on the single farm payment like, and strive to not, not need it like in New Zealand where they have no subsidies. I do not believe in the concept of a nation. Um, today, in 21st century Britain, we live in a diverse, consequently rich and ultimately beautiful society. Our grid reference maps not only display our road networks, they display a deep and lavish tapestry, each individual thread a different colour and length with its own story to tell. So I propose that we make it compulsory for all children aged 14, sorry, aged 4 to 16 to have language lessons at school. So, uh, hello, I'm a parliamentary sorry, researcher, so many people assumed this would be an absolute walk in the park for me. Um, it's not, because it's very tempting to rewrite the entire political system on the back of a piece of paper. <laughs> I thought that would be unwise, so I have instead chosen just two ideas. Um, the first one is... As a nation, we're dangerously disengaged with politics. I looked up some figures, and in 2010, the 18 to 24-year-old age bracket, only 44% of them went to vote. 
If I was Prime Minister for a day, I would sort out education, not the system per se, I don't know enough about it to sort it out, but the resulting in what happens once you're out of the system. You know, it's okay to teach someone for 15 years, but then you sort of get kicked out, forgotten about, and the next you know, generation's in. The country is in an economic mess. At the moment, the national debt stands at 1.077 trillion. To put it in another term, that's £16,445 for every man, woman and child in this country. So I thought, right, Prime Minister, there's quite a lot of things going wrong in the world, and in England specifically that I'd maybe like to change. We've got a credit crunch, we've got the Olympics is over, it's been a miserable summer. Where am I going to begin? What can I really do? And I thought, uh, right, I think we need a P. public holiday. <laughs> if I was Prime Minister for a day, um, tough bit of question, but all I know about sheep, so I would invent something that just not much else, a machine that would read what on earth they're thinking. But then I thought, no, people are going to get bored, we need some entertainment, what are we going to do? We're going to put on a massive um. magic show. <laughs> Who doesn't enjoy that? Get the kids entertained, get the family entertained, we'll all be getting stuck in. Recession, unemployment, joblessness, benefits, these are all the sorts of things that we hear on a daily basis and we read as a nation in the papers. As Prime Minister, I am sick and tired of reading about this. My first thing as Prime Minister would be to try and help get more or give more funding to the inner city farms because as a girl from London, don't really get much of the animal world in your life. At Key Stage 1, we went to a farm visit at 5, more just interested that it was a chicken that made a noise. <laughs> Wasn't that interested in the whole organisation of the farming. I feel that if we use the press to our advantage and take advantage of global food shortages, which we know are coming, global um, water shortages that we know are coming, global population growth that we know is coming. If we tap into this, unemployment will be drastically reduced. But it doesn't matter. The country's probably in ruin by this time, but hopefully everyone's had a good time. And anyway, it doesn't matter, because by tomorrow, I'll have oh. resigned. <laughs> Early days, but what do you think from meeting some of the contestants? Well, I think it just shows the power of the first impression, doesn't it? You saw the real characters coming out and the people that are a bit shy and stepping back and the questions certainly revealed the people that are going to be pushing the boundaries. And yeah, it was just really good, I think. I think also if you look at it, quite a few of the people who haven't said very much are the non-farmers. And I think they, they're going to need to build their confidence. I think the other guys probably think, you know, it's more likely to be one of us that wins. They're quite intimidated by some of them, their knowledge and their prior experience. But that's hopefully where we can come in with a bit oh, of mentoring definitely. and build their confidence and, sh you know, and just keep encouraging them that they can do it because yeah. you know, right. they're all here on their own merits, aren't they? And they, are, they will grow as, they, as the week goes on and the others may diminish a little bit as they see the others grow. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to watch them rise and fall, as it were. Remind us of the qualities that you're looking for in the contestants. And and I want to see somebody that has the ability to inspire and lead a team to be better than what they can be as an individual. And, um, you know, really grasp the industry and the challenges that we face and have somebody that has that ability to grow with the industry and be something really special. We need somebody who's got a goal, a focus, somebody who knows an idea of what they want and then builds the week around that. Because they've got to know what they want to be able to reach it, and some won't know what that is. I think we want to see somebody that's not scared about thinking out the box. And, mm. you know, I think in some ways the people that don't have a background in agriculture will find that easier because it's all new to them. Yeah. But we hope that the people that have a background in knowledge aren't just going to start spilling forth what daddy does at home. And I, I think what we're looking for is somebody that's always going to be an exceptional person in our industry, not just winning this week, but we'll be watching them for years to come. Yeah. An ambassador, almost. Mm. A Charlie, a young Charlie. A young Charlie. Heaven forbid, <laughs> not another one. <laughs> so, the first day is over and first impressions have already been made. Some of our apprentices might have proved their public speaking skills, but are the quieter contestants waiting for their moment to shine? One thing's for sure, all the apprentices will be going to bed agonising over what challenges day two will bring. Come on.